Welcome. Part two talks about domestic use of whammy and buckle in, it's time for a crazy ride. Make sure to watch the last video going through what all of this technology is first. That's a good place to start. And if you haven't joined the reading, it's not too late to hop on. It's only a hundred pages into the book. So buy the book using the Techlore support link in the description or use whatever way you can to get the book and join our Telegram group to discuss the book. Sierra Nevada, the contractor that built Gork and Stare, pitched a peacetime version of the camera, Vigilant Stare, to the FBI, Secret Service, and other federal agencies. In 2015, BAE demonstrated Argus to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Harris, in 2015, provided one of its whammy aircrafts for Urban Shield, a large yearly law enforcement and emergency preparedness exercise held in San Francisco. Logos Technologies, the Virginia-based contractor, makes flights for domestic agencies every few months, and Commuter Air Technology, an Oklahoma-based contractor, operates special ops aircrafts for the Pentagon with Whammy. It claims it can respond to emergencies anywhere in the U.S. within 24 hours. MAG Airspace has estimated to have surveyed over 13 million square miles of territory from military units anywhere in the U.S., Consolidated Resources Imaging, the company running Constant Hawk operations in Iraq, provides a similar set of services with a GA-8 single prop airplane. L3 sells a specialized intelligence airplane, Spider, that can be configured to carry wide area surveillance systems specifically for domestic airspace. In fall 2018, L3 merged with Harris, creating the sixth largest defense company, one with lots and lots of whammy. And those are just a few, my friends. Some others are Special Operations Solutions, Stevens Aviation, Avcon Industries, Valair Aviation, Support Systems Association, and Panopsis. All of these companies have a goal of getting their all-seeing eyes into as many law enforcement agencies as possible with almost a sadly unfortunate eventual success. Someday every city in the US will be watched with wide area surveillance systems. Yay! Rose McNutt had a goal of spreading domestic use of the aircrafts as part of persistent surveillance systems, let's call that PSS, throughout the country and he pitched his idea in 2008 to a few different agencies. His first hit was Juarez, a city at the center of Mexican drug wars. They kept this program under super tight wraps, of course, and the PSS program was cut short by a turnover in city government just six months after it began. Even so, PSS provided leads for more than 30 murders. This got McNutt noticed in the US. He's living the life. In 2015, a representative from the billionaire John D. Arnold Foundation asked McNutt to propose an American city where deployment of the surveillance would prove its worth. He answered ASAP Baltimore, a city where the previous year had been the bloodiest on record and 2015 was on track to be worse. Now, Baltimore in general had not been a fan of this type of surveillance, but somehow, just magically, in January 2016, PSS was flying over Baltimore and, just somehow, $360,000 was donated from the Arnold Foundation to the Baltimore city. So. I don't know, I'll let everyone watching tie some different points together. At first, this project was named Community Support Program, a pilot project that would conclude in fall 2016, where it would be presented to the city government for approval for permanent operation. The terms of the flights were as long as weather permitted, the company would fly a single prop Cessna with no police markings equipped with a 192 megapixel camera in a circular orbit from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. with one 30 minute break to refuel. This camera generated one 32 square mile frame per second video. In a single flight, it might capture a homicide, three or four assaults, dozens of muggings, and hundreds of drug deals. It operated at 10,000 feet above ground level, making it difficult to detect with the naked eye. So you won't be able to see it from the ground. Here's where things get a little iffy. As always, with mass data collection, the BPD was only supposed to keep footage that wasn't directly related to an investigation for 45 days. But McNutt told the author the camera will invariably capture evidence that is related to investigation somewhere in any frame. So there is always a reason for the department to hold on to all the data indefinitely. Now you might be asking, how is this even legal? The author uses the analogy of you snapping an image out of an airplane as it's taking off. From a legal standpoint, there's really no difference. If you record someone sunbathing in their backyard from a plane, it's not truly your fault. It's theirs for not taking better precautions to protect themselves from aerial observation. Airspace over America falls into the same legal category as other public spaces like sidewalks, roads, parks, and beaches. 
Because of these rules, there have been flights performed in Colorado suburbs, Charlotte, Wilmington, Boston, Rochester. The Air Force spent hours recording over the Ohio State University campus, Albuquerque, Pasadena, Lubbock, Seattle, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Los Angeles and Orange, California, Phoenix, Arizona, Palm Beach, Florida, and many more cities in the US. And if you're not in the US laughing at this video, well get ready because Australia, Germany, UK, Netherlands, China, and possibly more are already using this technology as well. But this isn't all bad. I mean, these things are pretty cool. The book discusses valid use cases for the technology, like helping in natural disasters, improving traffic flow, citing traffic violations, and that's it. As for the future, like all pieces of tech, they're planning on making these cameras smaller, lighter, better, clearer, and with improved software to go along with the whole package. And as this technology gets cheaper, it's only going to be more widely used and available to more and more people. Someday, your next door neighbor may be able to rent Whammy for an hour, or your ex may want to see what you're up to for your birthday weekend. And that's the end of the reading section.